Hello everyone, so today I thought I would show off my project which I've called Sparse. It is a AI simulation which looks at uh, creatures and evolution in a small environment space. I built this on C++ and it uses GLFW. Uh, I created a decision tree which uh, is used with the AI entities and also a star pathfinding which allows them to generally move around uh, as this was for an assignment and that those were the general things that they wanted even though i do think uh, wonder uh, a wonder sort of implementation would have been better um, the a star was required so a star is generally used for their movement so without further ado i will um, show you what i've been working on so this uh, simulation here looks at these creatures which I call minuscules. They consist of herbivores and predators in this current version. And they move around this small simulated space and uh, will generally be looking to eat and uh, give birth as well. Uh, and they will pass on every time they give birth they'll pass on their attributes that they currently have which is generated at runtime uh, and those attributes all have random chances of uh, changing in certain ways uh, which can over time simulate that sort of slow gradual evolution into something completely different uh, whether it be uh, more successful. Uh, the reason why I wanted to add predators, even though they're not extremely functional at this point, there can be a bit of unbalance between predators and herbivores depending on the run. It, it, every single time I've run this, I get sort of a different uh, outcome through this project where sometimes the predators might come out on top and wipe out herbivores sometimes the herbivores might come out on top and wipe out the predators and then every so often I do get a simulation where there is actually quite a nice little harmony for a long time um, until maybe um, a herbivore or the predators evolve like really good sight or speed and then throws off that kind of balance that we get um, and we kind of see an extinction event happen, uh, which then leads to the other side generally overeating um, and dying out themselves. So I've got a bit of balancing to do and I've got a bunch of uh, little extra features that I would like to add, but this is kind of the final product for the assignment anyway, which I thought um, is still rather interesting. So we've got the herbivores, which are these little round entities here. Um, and we've also got the predators, which are little, uh, much more meaner looking, spikier minuscules. And then we've also got these little green plant items, which are what the um, herbivores will go and try and eat. You may also notice that um, we can actually see there's some color differential between these different minuscules. Now, it's basically to kind of show different species. Um, the coloring is created through the different uh, attributes that they have within the uh, within each minuscule and so every time they uh, generate another one um, basically the program will just kind of take the attributes and generate that the color out of that so generally I'll find a blue coloration is a lot faster so you can see here through this kind of inspector uh, we can see that the speed is 32 where if I click on the red generally that means they're a lot slower um, there's also some differential uh, in their color uh, dictated by also sight and how well they can see so um, while this is kind of running in the background I'll just kind of go through um, how these attributes work. So uh, the minuscules have a health uh, stat which will dictate how well the entity is going. Uh, the modifiers here on the health can be the age and the food. So every time the minuscule gains an age it will generally it will lose a health. The age rate will dictate how slow that is, and you can kind of see that slowly ticking away. Once that reaches zero, they'll gain an age and they'll lose some health. Uh, 
Likewise, uh, with food, they always need to keep food in their bellies. So if uh, a particular entity is not doing very well, it's not getting food, then it's actually gonna die out a lot quicker because if it's got zero or less food in its belly, so a negative one, which means it's, it's starving, uh, it will lose health very, very rapidly uh, and just die from starvation, which uh, I tried to kind of add that sort of dynamic where uh, we can kind of get some interesting evolution possibilities there where we can get perhaps an entity that can live for an extremely long amount of time with age or it could uh, not live for very long, die very quickly because it doesn't have very, uh, very much lifespan a very big lifespan but perhaps it breeds very quickly and that could still be a successful entity so it's also got sexual maturity uh, which means at this point it's actually reached its sexual maturity and surpassed it so its age needs to be one or higher for it to start giving birth and it's also got a birth rate uh, of two which dictates how quickly that slowly ticks down and then they will um, give birth uh, through mitosis this is currently an asexual uh, mitosis um, birth. I would like to add uh, egg uh, style birth as well, and also sexual reproduction in there as well, which I think would be much more interesting. I might flick to a different entity now because this one just died from this uh, predator here. And moving down, we can see sight, which is actually in a negative at the moment, um, or can be resting like a lot of these at zero. This is actually a generation one, not a generation uh, zero, which there may be a few out there. Um, and sight, negative six, just basically means that they are generally evolving away from having sight, which uh, isn't generally a good thing. This one actually has sight and you can kind of see the sight radius it has, which is pretty small by the small little radius that's drawn by that little blue circle there. So in this case, this one uh, having no sight means that they're gonna be blind and they're gonna rely on just chance of kind of moving around. As you saw, this one actually ate the one that I was looking at before just by um, them both being blind and kind of bumping into each other like that one just did there. So it's doing fairly well at the start, but um, if they don't evolve to have sight, that's when you can kind of see, especially one or the other having um, a bit more of the advantage because you tend to find that they will flee and run away um, if they, um, whichever one has the sight will run because they'll be able to see and avoid. Uh, the state just dictates kind of what they're doing at the moment, what they're thinking. Um, so they're just wandering around. There might be certain ones that if they can see, they can either be seeking. Um, so this one may, no, it didn't get, it didn't actually see the food, but they'll, uh, that can change to like seek or flee, um, depending on what it's doing. Generation, so this is actually a generation zero. Um, it's had three children, so it's been very successful um, and it's near the end of its life. It's actually, a really good little entity, especially for a generation zero, um, because it has a very slow age rate. So as I was talking about before, um, there can be possibilities where um, they may not age very quickly and this one does not. Um, it also has a very slow digestion rate, which also means that it can actually um, stockpile a lot of food. Um, so it won't starve uh, very fast either. So if there was a real lack of food, um, this one would be okay for quite some time. Um, and then obviously it has three children, which um, if we click on something else, there we go. Uh, this one's generation one, so it's still, it's very young. It's still age zero um, and it has no children. But once it hits age one, it's gonna get sexual maturity and gonna be able to start giving birth. This one also has sight. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the one that we were looking at before may have even been, um, been, a, uh, been its parent uh, because it does actually have uh, a little bit more speed than what you'd usually find in a generation zero and certainly a lot more sight than what you generally see in a generation uh, zero as well. Um, so yeah, they'll run around. Now I do have a fast forward button that you can um, activate so we can kind of see the um, the whole simulation running a little bit quicker so we can kind of get a little bit more of an interesting sort of um, 
situation a lot quicker. The plants also will float around. I kind of wanted to simulate more of a kind of a liquid environment, so they're going to slowly float around uh, and regenerate. Of course, if they're all eaten, uh, then they don't regenerate. That just generally means it's the end. Now, something interesting has happened here. Uh, all the predators have been very successful um, here. So it kind of looks like they're actually all blind at the moment. This one has a slight amount of sight, like nothing that would help it, but it is slowly evolving to have that, where the most successful herbivores at this point, that there's, there's quite a few that are blind, but the most successful herbivores at the moment are actually has sight. So I would actually expect to see a drop in the predators as uh, because food is extremely scarce, there's only eight herbivores left, and then a huge increase in um, herbivore population, which can be something that actually happens. Um, I've seen this a couple of times, this sort of scenario a couple of times with through varied situations, um, or some of the herbivores may get extinct, uh, depending on if there's. I have seen herbivores get extinct as well, but it looks like perhaps the predators may just win. Depending on, yeah, there we go. Okay, so the predators are pretty much all gone. Um, and we have two herbivores, which looks like this one's actually not doing too bad. This one's quite old. Um, it's a generation five. I generally don't actually see this kind of extinction of like all the predators and pretty much all, every herbivore um, until maybe generation 12 uh, or generation 13. So this is a rather interesting sort of scenario um, where we'll probably see an extreme explosion of entities if I kind of fast forward um, the whole thing a little bit. It will, yeah, they'll explode into these really like good sight um, um, entities. The thing is as well is uh, at the moment they're not really going to be penalized for having a worse gene so um, sometimes you'll get predators and the herbivores all evolving sight and speed and they can be very competitive and that's when you get some of the more interesting kind of evolution kind of simulations and that's kind of where I would like to be trying to um, just tweak it a little bit so I get those sorts of results a little bit more often just to make at least the start a bit more interesting. Um, because at the moment uh, you can see there's kind of like some difference between sight here um, and I would expect that um, if we did have a bit more predators and some more competitiveness, the ones with the worst genes would obviously die out, um, the worst attributes would die out, and um, we would see the ones with the better genes succeeding. So this is just a population explosion, which uh, if I just slow it down here, we may get a little bit better on our frame rate. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically sparse in a nutshell as it's currently working. Um, I'm hoping to get a little bit more done on it. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this project, so I'm definitely going to continue working on it and then uh, probably chuck some more stuff uh, on my website as well and hopefully just uh, release this eventually for people to kind of play around with and have a look at also on my website. So if you'd like to check that out, it's uh, at www.turnwolfproductions.com. The link will be down below. Uh, thanks so much guys for uh, watching and uh, I will be releasing a video of some more of my work later on. Thanks.